Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's look at another way to optimize the context rendering behavior in React. Now this again is a technique we have already seen when trying to optimize parent-child rendering. And that is the same element reference technique. I'm going to make changes in the code we've already written and then explain how it works. In the context parent component, I'm going to delete the memoist child a component. Instead, I'm going to destructure children from the component props and specify the same as children to the context provider. So within the count provider, children is going to be the children props. Back in app.js, we have to slightly modify the context parent invocation. Instead of the self-closing tag, we now have opening and closing tags. And as children to this component, we're going to specify the child A component. Make sure to import it at the top. Let's save all the files and test this out in the browser. On page load, we have the log messages from all the four components corresponding to the initial render. If I clear the console and click on the count button, you can see that only the parent and the child C components re-render. The rendering behavior is optimized to the way we want it to behave. The count value is also reflected properly in parent and child C components. Let's quickly understand what is happening here. When the setter function is called in the parent component, React queues a re-render of the component. However, React knows that re-render is caused by a state change. The component also cannot modify its own props, which means the children prop could not have been modified. What is the children prop? It's the child A component. So React now knows that child A hasn't been modified and there is no need to re-render that component. This is an optimization React automatically takes care of. As React goes down the component tree, it will re-render just the child C component as it consumes a context value whose value has been changed. So if you're using context in your React application, Either make sure to wrap the immediate child of the context provider with React memo, or make sure to use the children props to make use of the same element reference optimization that React provides. All right, with that, we come to the end of this series about React and the rendering behavior in React. I hope you enjoyed finding out the smaller details in React as much as I did. If you found this series helpful, please leave a like and share the playlist with your friends and colleagues. If you would like to go the extra mile, you can also support me on Patreon. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, take care.